Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Neck Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. Man, every other day in the news you hear about inflammation. And most of the news about inflammation is that inflammation is bad. But inflammation is the normal response of the body to injury or infection. Meaning that if somebody got a COVID infection or got an upper respiratory infection, pneumonia, like, you need inflammation to get rid of the infection. Like that's how the body mounts an immune reaction to get rid of the infection. Every day there's cancer cells in our bodies forming. So our body has to get rid of those cells. So it gets rid of it by inflammation. And then if you sprain your ankle, do you want your ankle sprain healed? Well, the body heals it by inflammation. So the inflammatory cascade is how inflammation occurs in the body. Neurogenic inflammation is inflammation caused by nerve irritation or degeneration. So a person could have a nerve irritated and a certain part of their leg, like their foot, is swollen you know, from uh, nerve irritation. Now, uh, there are systemic and structural reasons inflammatory conditions overwhelm the body. So most of us know somebody who just has like fibromyalgia, they have body pain all over their body, or they have an autoimmune disease such as rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, or they just have, they just feel swollen all over their body. So there's lots of different causes for this. There's systemic causes than their structural causes. So obviously if somebody's ingesting something that's bad for them, that their body mounts an immune reaction, for instance, the most common one of those would be, of course, an allergy. If somebody has an allergy of something, like they have gluten sensitivity, they have celiac disease, and then they ingest bread, they might get swollen all over their body. We know that if somebody has negative thinking, they're a complainer, they're bitter all the time, they're angry, they're much more likely to have an inflammatory condition in their body. And then when you look at what does that cause, it often causes metabolic dysfunction or mitochondrial dysfunction. Mitochondria are the powerhouses of the human cell. That's how we generate energy. So if your mitochondrial in your cells can't generate energy, that's where you get chronic fatigue or chronic fatigue syndrome. Then most people are unaware that you can have systemic inflammation all over your body just from problems related to structure. So when you have ligamentous cervical instability, that can injure the vagus nerve or it can cause fluid flow into and out of the brain to be compromised and that can cause brain disease or increased intracranial pressure. So when the brain isn't working and the vagus nerve, because the vagus nerve is what gets rid of, is the electrical current that gets rid of inflammation in the body. So if you want to research this, type in Google cholinergic anti-inflammatory system, and that'll go into detail of how the vagus nerve gets rid of inflammation in the body. So there are structural causes of inflammation. So the structural causes of inflammation are treated by chiropractic care, exercise treatments such as prolotherapy. And then if you end up having inflammation over your body or your brain for too long of a period of time, you can get all kinds of symptoms. And the most common symptom is chronic fatigue. So this talk is supposed to be about when inflammation can be good. So the necessary reasons for inflammation are to prevent infection or get rid of infection, cancer, toxicity, or poisoning. Uh, it helps fight these kind of things. And of course, you need inflammation to heal chronic tendon injuries, ligament injuries. So prolotherapy is an injection technique that stimulates the inflammatory cascade to tighten, thicken ligaments, resolve joint instability, and get rid of the pain of osteoarthritis. This just explains that when you get an infection, there's immune cells, the inflammatory immune reaction that fights infection like in the lungs. 
There are so many substances or chemicals involved in the inflammatory cascade in the body. I'm not going to go through, you know, all the substances in this uh, illustration, but just to kind of go through what's happened over the course of even uh, when I've been in practice over the course of the last 35 years. I graduated med school in 19. 88, so meaning that I went to med school starting 1984, and now it's 2023. So if you look at the history of medicine, that in the 1940s, 1950s, at Mayo Clinic, they discovered cortisol or cortisone. So then we felt like, oh, cortisone can get rid of like rheumatoid arthritis and all these things. Then you took too much cortisone, then all these terrible things happened to the body, like the joint deteriorated and you got osteoporosis and you puffed up like a puffer fish. So then uh, pharmaceutical companies developed NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. So then they would use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, hopeful that those things were less toxic to the body, for lack of a better term. It's interesting that if you look at the advertisements for pharmaceutical drugs, it's almost like now we're in the age of biologics where there's almost all the drugs developed, or it seems like a propensity of the drugs are more and more powerful to get rid of inflammation. And almost all of them decrease tumor necrosis factor. Like, there's no doubt Enbrel, Humira, some of these drugs, they definitely help the person's symptoms. But it's interesting to me, it seems like the average person has more and more inflammation in the body, so the drugs have to be more and more powerful. And if you look at the side effect profile of these really powerful drugs, you'll see that there's a major side effect profile. So. The question is, we probably should look more at what's causing the problem and address the cause of the problem than using really, really strong medicines and only use them if we have to, right? That makes sense. So if somebody has destructive thinking, they got toxins, you might say, well, where do I get toxins? Well, anything that's a chemical can be a toxin. Pesticides can be a toxin. Heavy metals can be a toxin. Look at the food that you're eating. Are there ingredients in the food that you don't know what it is? It's probably some kind of toxin that could have dangerous effects. And then, yeah, there's just all kinds of causes. So the point is we really should get rid of negative thinking, complaining thinking, eat organic if we can afford it. If you can't afford it, do your best to eat real food. Cook your own food. Like if you said what my wife's dream is is just to get people to cook doesn't even have to be organic, just, just cook your own food because then you're gonna know what goes into it. You're not gonna have chemicals into it. You know, there's onions in it, there's garlic in it. You know, like you know all the ingredients. And if you don't do that and you end up having systemic toxic inflammation, it's associated with almost every disease, heart disease, high blood pressure, cancer. So the first thing is to try to address the cause of systemic toxic inflammation. If you have a healthy diet, you're, you feel loved and you give love, like you're in safe environment, safe relationships, and you don't know why you have systemic toxic inflammation, then look at things such as cervical destruction, cervical vagopathy, jugular vein compression, which I talk about in other videos, but it's related to ligamentous, a joint instability in the neck. So if you have clicking, popping in the neck, that could be causing it. And inflammation, too much inflammation in your body can even cause things such as depression. And obviously, if you eat poorly and you have leaky gut and substances are getting into your body, like toxic substances, those are gonna cause a bad inflammatory reaction. And there's more and more data showing that immune dysregulation or systemic inflammation has as one of its causes the digestive tract and the way to get your digestive tract healthy is good bacteria, proper eating, 
a good vagal tone, like the vagus nerve has to be the supply to the digestive tract to the enteric nervous system. So the tight junctions are selective, like when you eat that it's selective of what gets absorbed and what doesn't get absorbed. So that's why when we eat, we really are supposed to be relaxed. You shouldn't, when you're eating, talk about toxic things or negative things because when you're stressed and you get into sympathetic dominance, you, your digestive tract doesn't work as good. So if you're somebody with digestive tract issues, you get nauseated, you got a sensitive stomach, you have to have positive things going on when you're eating. Like you have to talk about positive things, good things. Marianne and I, instead of talking about the SHIT that might have happened during the day, we try to talk about first about what's the best thing that happened in the day, what's an inspirational thing that happened in the day. And then when you talk about the good things that happen in the day, the bad things aren't nearly as bad. And then there's obviously things that we can do ourselves to lower inflammation in the body. So some of the best things to take are fish oils or EPA or DHA or cold press flaxseed oil. I try to take fish oil pills each day and Mary and I, we do eat, we try to eat a lot of fish, but of course we can get fresh fish here in Florida. The rest of this talk is gonna be mostly talking about localized inflammation. So inflammation is good to fight infection, to decrease our risk of cancer, like when our immune system's good, our body will stop cancer cells from forming. And then when you have a localized injury, such as your knee, if you right away start popping anti-inflammatory pills, you're actually stopping the body's ability in some way to heal that knee injury. So that's why I'm definitely against athletes using anti-inflammatories regularly. Like if you're needing every time you go out and play golf or you play pickleball or play football and you need to take a whole bunch of anti-inflammatories, it's a very, very bad idea because your body has to repair the damaged tissue that occurred during the athletic activity. And this is just the healing cascade. So you have a sports injury, there's an inflammatory reaction, there's an influx of immune cells and then the body attempts to heal. If it doesn't heal it, then you use something that stimulates healing such as prolotherapy. Prolotherapy is gonna induce an inflammatory reaction. You're gonna get proliferation of cells and ultimately the ligaments, tendons, the joints gonna remodel and then once the tissues repaired, then of course the symptomatology goes away. Dynamic structural medicine looks at human health, the study of human structure with different postures and motions and the maintenance and restoration of human health. In human disease, the study of human structure in different positions and motions in the cause and prevention of human disease. So basically, dynamic structural medicine is how the body moving can affect the activities of the organs of the body, such as the brain, the heart, the lungs, the digestive tract. Normally what's supposed to happen is when the body moves, the heart's supposed to respond in a certain way. So imagine if the body moves and the heart goes boom, 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 boom. As it relates to inflammation, the, when the vagus nerve is stimulated, like for instance, if you research vagus nerve stimulation and rheumatoid arthritis, you'll see that a good percentage of the inflammation from autoimmune disease goes down when you stimulate the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is how the body gets rid of inflammation. So if you have ligamentous cervical instability and it's injuring the vagus nerve, that can be one of the factors that gives you systemic inflammation in the body. So that would mean that you have a to address the inflammation by correcting the neck curve, the instability in the neck, and if there's malalignments, correct the malalignments. And this just kind of explains how there's components of dynamic structural medicine, health, and disease. As it relates to 
systemic instability. I'm not saying that a person would start with autoimmune disease to get prolotherapy, but you would address eating, you would do positive thinking, you would do lifestyle suggestions. Like I've had patients who they're in a terrible marriage or they have a terrible job or their sister always calls them and they're a negative nilly. So if you have systemic inflammation and you wanna resolve it or at least minimize it, you have to put the body in a state of high vagal tone, which is being relaxed, be around people who are positive, laugh a lot, hug a lot, you know, like be around people that love you and that you love. Work on your faith, try to really have a strong faith in God, that God loves you. I think of myself as a beloved son of God. I'm not the son of God, but a beloved son of God that Beloved means the object of God's affection. So if I every day think of like that God loves me, that goes a long way in me handling stress or me being in a frame of mind to really try to help people. And if you have systemic inflammation and your next cracking, clicking, popping, consider getting prolotherapy. And I guess we're done. 